1,000 subscribers! Alle Udien Evan Shevelasina Nan. We have a beautiful night, don't we? It took me a little while to get used to bathing in public, but I realized it wasn't a very big deal when other people also didn't treat it like a very big deal. In the north, we don't have public bathing year-round. There's a festival in Nova Thule, when snow melts to mark the start of summer, where commoners go down to the Imperial River and uh, wash, to wash their laundry and bathe. Uh, unlike southerners, though, we wear bathing suits. Uh, usually made of thinly woven rheumatoid wool or uh, linen, or if you have money, imported seal skin or bamboo silk. Oh, money, that reminds me, I have something to give you later, don't let me forget. But anyway, yes, in the north there's no reason to be fully naked in front of anyone, let alone someone you don't even know. It's dangerous and cold and immodest. Some people won't even show their ungloved hands to strangers. The river outside of Nova Thule is spring water, but it isn't actually good to drink. Uh, only plants and animals can drink it usually. Nobles typically don't like to participate, so I've never done it myself. However, they do, however, schedule private bathing, settings, uh, private bathing sessions where they eat and drink and negotiate deals for the upcoming growing season. Uh, in a place where they clearly can't have weapons. Although I have never been invited myself. I, uh, I am not a noble myself, despite working for a noble family, or formerly working for a noble family. Gil told me they sprinkle the water with tobacco flowers, or cologne, pine-scented cologne, and that most people are already bathed and shaved and sprayed in cologne before they even arrive. It doesn't sound particularly pleasant, though, I'll admit. I have been lucky enough to have access to a private bath year-round. Bathtubs themselves are instruments in the north that circulate water and keep it hot. We use salts and oils and foams to clean ourselves. Heated yeast pumps, wrapped in the same shape that trees grow the roots in, bring water up from the tank beneath the house, though in the coldest nights it's usually safest to get water from melted ice. That's where we get most of our drinking water, in fact, in the winter, is there's a big kettle in the kitchen, and uh, smaller kettles that the staff will keep filled throughout the manor. Uh, commoners usually don't have private baths. If they do, they're usually not heated by yeast, unless they're a mage. Instead, most commoners take steam baths before jumping in the snow and then returning indoors. But small children are not thrown in the snow, however, and neither are uh, babies or very, very old people. That's considered bad for their health. Sagenheim, as I understand, has public bathing on a family basis, where each hall has its own bathhouse. They also primarily take steam baths for cleanliness, as I understand. They'll, after sweating out their impurities, they'll jump into ice-cold water to fully purge the rest of them, and then they exfoliate with rough bamboo brushes and uh, then soothe their skin afterwards with flower oil made out of the lantern flowers that only grow there in the womb of the world. Sagan ships also have, all have steam rooms, usually near the east engine, but they don't all have access to huge barrels of clean water at sea, so people s simply wipe down with cold water after. This is similarly the case on airships. Not that the North has any since the war ended. Sagan folk tend to have beards and elaborate braids when they can. Oiling a beard or braid and protecting it is seen as a badge of honor. Many in the close blast radius of the destruction of Toya Noir also had all of their hair fall out. And, of course, this is a double insult given the pride with which they place in their hair. Novathulians love their long hair, too, and nobles grow out long, beautiful hair to show how much money they have to maintain it. But it's not the same. At Toygen Oyer, some lost their eyeballs or jaws or other organs, and as they simply turned to liquid in the blast. But when they mourned, what I heard the most was that they mourned the loss of their hair. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to open old wounds. Well, not that they're that old, but anyway. <laughs> The after Cartoria is warm enough that they have public baths open year-round, and they don't have bathing suits. In the Sphonic city of Rurikia, the city of many colors, 
They have a whole mountainside full of tubs, some natural, some molded from their infamous rainbow clay. And apparently you can go there either for beauty or for medicinal uh, needs. And depending on your needs, they'll have different tubs with different orders that you soak in, with different natural minerals, and uh, all that sort of thing. They say that it can improve circulation, respiratory health, skin conditions, fatigue, soreness, and of course, diseases of the mind. Seasoned witches are also there to offer cosmetic advice and sell many salts and creams and oils to help with these various ailments. The rest of Sonic culture isn't quite this extreme, but it is in Eureka. Interestingly, in Sonic culture, only women are allowed to have long hair, and as such, there is a much more elaborate process to protect their natural curls. Protective braids and specific creams that their masculine counterparts don't seem to use as much uh, are very popular amongst women in Sonic culture. Uh, Inquisitor Saravanya told me, though, that back in her day, these hair lengths were imposed by demon overlords to more easily distinguish between male and female humans. Today, it's more of a cultural expectation, though I don't think I've seen anyone who gets particularly offended if you have long hair or short hair and it's not matching your assigned sex at birth. Today, it's more of a cultural expectation, but Inquisitor General Zalathiel has long hair, and this doesn't seem to bother anyone. Telethenian communal bathing is based on condominiums, Diakates tells me. Most places have small private tubs with drains into the city's sewer system, but ch some cheaper buildings don't. Individual private tubs are purely for health concerns, perhaps customized to someone uh, with mobility issues, or if someone's sick, then maybe they'd use a private tub by themselves. But public tubs are the social ex expectation, along with communal laundering. Though being a laundry alchemist is a very well-respected profession, and every city block has at least one. They're always in high demand, though, as the different silks and linens of the Afterpretoria all require different dangerous chemicals to keep them all white and clean. In the hot summers, bathing is a nightly ritual, uh, an after-dinner ritual, and in the winter it can be as little as once a fortnight to once a month. Diakaeus has his own tub. This is that one. He says it's because his villa is usually used to host out-of-town guests and many other senators usually stay here. But since I live here now, of course, it's a little unsafe for them. You know, on account of the war crimes. Every day, I make a little bit of progress towards healing, but some days it really feels like I go backwards. Nessa says that this is normal and that healing takes time, that I have to just take it one day at a time and take care of myself and to celebrate the little things. That's why I do all the things that I do when I bathe now, like the bath salts and the butters and all that stuff. Nessa says that when you take care of yourself, you'll heal the wounds in your heart. I really hope she's right. But clearly we're doing something right. My handler says that there are 1,000 of you now. That's enough to run a larger mature herd or two or to man a small Eastern factory. I'm really honored that you've joined my growing coterie, Bangun Se. Oh, the surprise, I almost forgot. I have a thing for you. I have worked with my handler to make new merch for you all. We have posters, bags, stickers, a hoodie, all themed around Isaya. We might have some other things. Uh, she hasn't given me the full list yet, but if they're here, she'll put them up. Everything is Isaya themed, and, of course, we'll take requests for new things. Since it's all print-on-demand, we can just print one copy and just for you. I'm not really making any money off of this. You're basically only printing, paying for the printing and the shipping. Because this is really all for you, and it's, of course, for me, because I want more Isaya merch. Now, while I might be the face of Isaya, I'm not a one-man show. We are all contributors to the world of Isaya. I mean, like, Lexi Kimori did this model, Connie John did my rigging, and Eric did the musical style guide of Isaya. Raw Ice, my man, Raw Ice, what a chad. He does all my music like an actual god, and he doesn't get paid or appreciated enough. <laughs> Grim Coordinator did my Spidey Boys, and Swan did Kina Varis, and Carla Chan and Freezing Turtle and Kelp all do a non-zero amount of my art for not enough money. 
Alex Lundquist, Mai More, Seti, Galactic Sand, and Reaper of Crows just exist and create alongside me, then that is enough to warm my heart. The Amazing Dragon's Rose does like 50% of my voice work when it isn't me, and whenever I get a live action film kid, she is absolutely going to do all of my fight choreography, and of course, Emer's Locking Fear, my beloved sponsor, Handler of Diakaeus, Zalathiel, Kivik, Sepestro, voice of most male characters on this channel, geological engineer, and dungeon master extraordinaire. Truly my greatest muse. Mwah. I love you all. I literally couldn't do this without you. Thanks to you all, we do actually welcome creativity of all kinds here. From writing to game dev, edgy to adorable, here we make things that truly touch your heart, and I'm honored that we do. Okay, is this better? Is this better? No, this isn't better. Okay, hang on. <laughs> 